All right, guys, welcome to the fourth recording of the five minute telephysio talks, uh, the longest title for the shortest interview. Today, we're pretty excited. We'll be interviewing Emily Collins. Uh, just to brag on her a little bit, because she would not do it on her own. She is the 2019 Ohio Ultra Runner of the Year. Uh, she is also a top 20 finisher in a race called the Spartathlon, which is arguably one of the uh, most difficult, most impressive ultra races um, in, the, in the world. It's a 150-mile race from Athens, Greece to Sparta, Greece. Uh, she's also the Burning River 100-miler first overall finisher for females. And more impressively, to add on to that, is the week before, she actually competed in a 24-hour uh, 24 hour race in Vermont and set the course record for that race as well. Uh, but what I will let do from here is I'll actually transition over to Tim as he starts running some of the interview. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Mike. Um, so Emily, we're excited to hang out with you uh, via teleconference. Uh, we have a couple of questions, some quick hitters. And our first one is if you don't mind, tell our audience um, a little about who you are as an athlete and your story of uh, getting into ultra running. Sure. I am. Um... I'm an ultra runner who tends to run races that are 100 plus miles in length. So I've been doing that competitively for about three years. And um, I was really lucky that I started racing uh, competitively about the same time I met you, Tim. Um, so you've kind of been with me the whole time. Um, before that, I, I did do trail races and some ultras. Um, mostly just as a social uh, mechanism. But mm -hmm. since, since uh, I started running competitively, I've, I've really needed to make sure that I'm recovering well. So thank goodness you guys have been around. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's definitely a, a blessing on my end that I've gotten to see all the way from the very beginning, from the, now quarter 100, I believe, where I think you were second overall female, um, <laughs> That's right. all the way to, all the way to where we are now. Uh, it's definitely a, <laughs> Um, uh, been pretty cool to see that. We do have the question of how has POPs helped you along that journey? Um, what are things that you feel like we have kind of aided to that uh, in, in your career so far? I mean, I, I don't, it's more like a partnership than it is anything else. I don't think I could have done anywhere near what I've been able to do without you. Um, so I, I, I think you call it your maintenance program. At least that's what I call it. <laughs> I, I see you, I think, at least once a month um, regularly. And I do that um, during good times and I do that, you know, when, much more frequently when something's off. Um, so every once in a while I'll start, you know, really getting tight in my calves or something to that effect and then I'll see you more frequently. Um, but it's great to be able to check in with you. It's almost, I almost feel like you're a coach <laughs> uh, in addition to my health provider. So um, it's really, really nice to be able to check in and talk through how to approach, you know, different problems that I'm having. It's a problem solving experience. It's really great. Yeah. And I think you're definitely, uh, you definitely nail the description of that. It is like a partnership. You know, I could sit here right now and I could probably list off a lot of your best races and PRs because it's been that personalized racing for such a long time, uh, which is mm -hmm. awesome. And something that's a pretty unique experience here, which I feel blessed to have the ability to work in a job like that with the athletes in Northeast Ohio. Um, our last one is as who is someone who's becoming a more seasoned ultra runner and going through her career. What are things that either newer athletes or current athletes on that ultra marathon scene, what can they be doing at home to continue and chase PRs or cover well uh, and avoid injury? So I really don't like the idea of using, you know, this time of pretty much total crisis for most people, I think, uh, to do things that you wouldn't do normally. Um, so I, I don't want to add a bunch of new stuff to my routine, um, even if my routine has changed. But I do want to add things in that I'm going to consistently do over time. Um, so I've been doing a lot of body weight and uh, band exercises, some of them recommended by you, Tim. Um, I'm, I'm definitely, you know, being consistent about my weightlifting, which has been really, really nice. And it's definitely helping my, my hips uh, through the band work and my hill strength, which is something that has been, you know, more, one of the more difficult areas for me uh, is hill running. So I'm, I'm feeling a lot better about that. Uh, another point that I would make, especially for women, 
is uh, to make sure after a workout that you get into the habit of ingesting some kind of protein after your workout um, and try not to run fasted. So those are two things that I've been really trying to focus on. So I'm not leaving the house before getting some kind of uh, calories in me before a workout. And then when I get back, I make sure that I have, you know, protein in some form or another. And then the third thing that I'll mention is that this is an excellent time for endurance runners to think about your mental game. So, you know, when you're on your solo run, which is the only run that you're probably doing <laughs> right now, and something comes up, it's a great time to really practice moving through it, you know, let it be tough, let it feel tough. Uh, that's what's going to happen in a race too. Uh, and practice working through it. Um, so I've had a lot of that, <laughs> that lately since I'm dealing with a piriformis issue with your help. And that's, that's pretty darn awesome. Advice. And I mean, I, uh, I can definitely agree with the strength training parts like armor building. You know, I think all yeah. football players and soccer players understand you don't play football and soccer every single day to get good at your sport. Mm -hmm. There's all these other small components uh, that go into it and running. Uh, and you are a runner. It is not just that part of it that makes you a runner. It's all those little things that are cumulatively added up inside of your recovery equation. Um, so thank you for that. I do think I hear yeah. Dr. Mike coming our uh, our end music over there in the other room. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we'll transition back over to him. <laughs> and what I will say is uh, Emily makes a good point, obviously, uh, in times like this, in times of crisis, when maybe it isn't appropriate to be uh, running with large groups or you are finding it difficult to get into clinician, both Dr. Tim and I are offering telehealth as, a, as an option going on. And that's for the injured athlete to help with recovery, but it's also for the uh, progressing athlete who is looking to advance their exercises. Um, we'll post up a code down here below. Uh, if you are interested in telehealth, you can schedule at physioorthoperform.com and you can use the code POPS, that's capital P-O-P-S, uh, for a discount there. But uh, I will save you all the humming and we'll close out from here. Emily, thank you so much for chatting with us.